Hey everyone, it's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. I want to do a quick recap um, on the MLC letter that came out last week. I want to do a short little video and then I'm going to do another video breaking it down. Uh, we know that a lot of people were very upset at this at this letter that the Municipal Labor Committee sent out. We want to make a few very quick points about it so as to calm some uh, anger and uh, anxiety over it. So here is the letter. Uh, and I I want to just point out a few things. Like the when we've done the uh, debunking bullshit letters, we will be highlighting things or underlining words and sentences that we find are to be falsehoods, right? But in general, what this letter is basically about um, the Municipal Labor Committee sent this letter out to Adrian Adams and the City Council, and then some of the unions sent it out to all of their members, as in like, aha, look what we got. All of these unions are now standing against you. Um, this was really a political hatchet job because what they did was took all of these unions that signed on to this letter at the bottom. Well, first, you know, there's your MLC5. And then you have the AFL-CIO, this New York City Central Labor Council, and then 15 other unions at the bottom who are mostly private sector unions who are not subject to the Taylor Law, not subject to in Intro 1099 that we're trying to pass. But each and every one of them have provided the city council with campaign donations. Um, one member so far has, has returned our call. He did not consent to being on this letter and demanded his name come off. So we know there's probably a few more. And the Central Labor Council, we believe, was behind this letter because every one of the people on it is also a vice president of the Central Labor Council. Um, what they have done in doing this letter was a, a strategic division and subtraction. And this is exactly what the Municipal Labor Committee is doing. And clearly now the MLC uh, with the Central Labor Council and AFL-CIO, that despite the fact that we have been winning in court this entire time, despite the fact that we have had unanimous appeals decisions, um, they still chose to repeat the big lie that a two sentence legislation that affirms what the court says we are supposed to have a healthcare choice of healthcare plans and the city cannot take us out of our um, supplemental plan. Um, we wanted a two sentence bill that specifically says the city must provide a supplement and also that nothing in the bill prevents the unions from collectively bargaining for themselves. So that in nowhere in this letter do they say how that two sentence legislation is illegal uh, and how it is a it is attacking their fundamental tenets of collective bargaining. Unions do not represent retirees. Hard stop right there. Um, but even though we've been winning in court, this does not absolve the unions from from supporting us from their responsibility to us. It doesn't relieve them from their obligation to doing the moral and ethical thing for the people that used to be in their unions, uh, not sacrificing retirees to management or even for the sake of their active members. They are supposed to protect us all. There is a solemn obligation that has always been understood that that obligation, what their job is about that you cannot build a labor movement on division and subtraction, but that is exactly what the MLC has been doing. And then today with reviewing this letter, it's a, it's also now become a part of the AFL-CIO and the New York City Central Labor Council. Um, apparently they have all taken the same line. The labor movement is about unity and solidarity, and it is not about subtraction and division. And this is the disgracefulness of this because this is exactly what they've become, unfortunately. This letter is nothing but a political hatchet job. It, it does not cite or source anything that um, will prove any points in it about it being illegal, about a two-sentence bill being ill-advised, 
or affects their collective bargaining. They'll keep saying it. It's just common gaslighting. And then to put all of these other unions on here that don't know our fight, who aren't subject to Taylor and aren't subject to 1099, it's extremely telling. And then, of course, having one union already tell us that they didn't authorize their name to be put on here, as well as all of the officers that are on this steering committee um, on this column in the left in blue, not one of them are on here except for the first five executive officers. And so right then and there, that says enough. This bill, intro 1099, is not illegal. It does not violate collective bargaining. It doesn't violate the Taylor law. It doesn't, it is not, it is not any of those things. Unions can't bargain for retired persons, and yet they want to absolve their responsibility to, re, to a retired union person or retired labor or retired workers. That is immoral, reprehensible, and they should never do that. That, that alone will damage the labor movement. It is very disturbing. We understand that. Our retirees are very frustrated by this. Michael Mulgrew, Tom Murphy put this letter out on Friday and it angered a lot of people. Tom Murphy doesn't even know what he's talking about. Neither does Michael Mulgrew or Henry Garrido. And yet they somehow convinced the Municipal Labor Committee, convinced the Central Labor Council to have all of their vice presidents sign, sign this letter for what purpose? by saying that it diminishes pensions. No, your pensions are actually codified in law. Uh, you have better protections because it's codified in statute, the constitution. We need a statute because never before has a union reduced a benefit of a retired worker for the sake of management and their active workers. We need protection from the very people that were supposed to be protecting us. I'm going to tell you all, the unions need to find their way home. This is this is an immoral act to sell off retiree vested health benefits and then convince how many people to sign on to a letter that they probably don't even know the argument. So I'm going to ask every single union on this letter, we expect a reply from you that you understand the issue, that you know why we sued the city multiple times and have won every time we've been in court, including unanimous decisions before the Court of Appeal, before the First Department Appellate Court, and, um, and that you understand that the people that you just endorsed were stripping away a vested health benefit from retired labor. We also want you to understand that they are forcing retired workers into managed privatized care off of a choice of plans and off access in many situations without access to, to the public health benefit of Medicare, which labor helped found in 1965. That is dangerous. So we're asking you, do you understand what you just signed on to with this, with this letter. If you haven't, we stand ready to explain it to you. We'll be waiting for your call. <laughs> and shame on you, Harry, Henry, Michael, Greg, Gloria, Mario, and Vinny. <laughs>